So Eddie Hearn has sent an official offer to Javonta Davis for a fight against Conor Ben in the USA in April or May. Now Conor Ben has still got this British boxing border control issue hanging over his head. That's why he's fighting in America. Eddie Hearn keeps saying that he's clear to box and all this type of stuff. Well, why is he not fighting in the UK then, Eddie? <laughs> he loves trying to hoodwink the public with all that clear to box stuff. No, he hasn't got a British license. And if he could get one, if his team felt they could get one right now, then that's what they'd be doing. They obviously don't think they can get one. That's why they're fighting in America. Anyway, so Ben's kind of in limbo with regards to the license. He's also, at least in the minds, it would seem, of his team, in limbo with regards to his career path because they don't seem to want to match him against any top welterweights. And Conor Ben, at least at one point, was ranked quite highly in the top 10 of at least one of the sanctioning bodies, but they don't seem to want to push towards a world title at 147 pounds for Conor Ben. Very, very strange. They are looking for this Chris Eubank Jr. fight up at middleweight, and now they're looking for a fight with Javonta Davis, who's coming up from lightweight, right? If this fight were to go ahead. Now, Javonta Davis, ordinarily, I don't think would be interested in this fight. And he might not be interested in this fight now. Eddie Hearn has got a history of putting out offers to people which they do not find within the ballpark of acceptable. So a couple of examples would be Adrian Broner. He's made offers to Tank Davis in the past. Chris Eubank Jr., obviously. That's the most recent one. And so you have to ask the question, are these offers serious? Now, some of them may be, but others, there's the possibility, are just being made for clout, whereby he knows that a certain fighter isn't going to accept a particular amount. But in order to keep his fighter, in this case, Conor Ben's name up in lights, he puts the offer out there knowing that it's derisory, right? So is that what Eddie Hearn is doing here with this offer to Javonta Davis? The reason I said Davis would ordinarily not accept this fight or not be interested in this fight, in my estimation, is because previously he had a network. Showtime. Showtime had a track record. He did that big pay-per-view with uh, Ryan Garcia, etc., etc. PBC are in a transitional period at the moment. Now, some people are going to say that Javonta Davis isn't officially a PBC fighter. Well, whatever. He has some type of relationship with them, whether it's contractual, whether it's handshake, whether it's just trust, whatever the case may be, he keeps on working with them. And at this stage, they're transitioning over to uh, Amazon Prime. The fighters with PBC must feel unsure of how the deal's going to go, whether they'll have the same type of money available to them that they did when Showtime were involved, etc., etc. For that reason, Javonta Davis might actually take this one seriously, or he might give it more consideration than if circumstances were different and Showtime was still in boxing. But I suspect he'll probably still turn it down. Because again, Eddie Hearn's got this history of making offers that fighters really don't want to take. They're not impressed by, etc., etc. Now, in some instances, of course, Eddie Hearn's making very good offers. And it's the fighter that is uh, being evasive and turning down perfectly good money. An example of that, obviously, would be when Deontay Wilder was offered over $100 million to fight Anthony Joshua. And that was DAZN themselves. The DAZN execs sat Deontay Wilder down and said, hey, here's this money. Sign on the dotted line, you get the AJ fight and over 100 million, he turned it down. So there are instances like that. But back then, the zone were much more aggressive with their spending. Uh, Eddie Hearn described it as overpaying fighters back then when they were trying to make a splash in the market and establish themselves. These days, they've tightened their purse strings quite a bit, it would seem. <laughs> They're not paying that same kind of crazy money anymore. So uh, yeah, I suspect Javonta Davis would turn this offer down. Uh, he may expose the offer as he has done before. Him and Adrian Broner have put out on their social media how much Eddie Hearn offered them for a particular fight. So he might do it again here. If the fight, as unlikely as it would seem, were to take place, how do I think it would go? I think Javonta Davis would win. I think he's technically leagues and leagues and leagues and leagues above Conor Ben. Ben obviously has the size advantage. He's taller. He's got longer arms. He's the physically bigger man. We don't know how Tank Davis's power would translate to 147, but he's such a precise puncher. 
And Conor Ben is so wild that against Ben, maybe not against other fighters like Boots Ennis or Terence Crawford, but against Conor Ben specifically, I think his power might translate. Not that he would have the same effect on Conor Ben that he had on smaller fighters, but I reckon he'd be able to hurt Conor Ben. I'm not sure whether he'd be able to hurt him enough to get him out of there. You know, Conor Ben has a very fiery spirit, just like his dad. That would maybe get him through against Javonta Davis to the final bell. But I just feel like from a technical perspective, these guys are worlds apart. He'd be fighting a southpaw in Javonta Davis as well. So I'd be picking Davis in the fight. Does Eddie Hearn think Conor Ben can really beat Javonta Davis? Again, he doesn't seem to want to put him in there against any of the top welterweights, presumably because he doesn't think there's as much money in those fights as there is fighting Chris Eubank Jr. or a Tank Davis, even an Adrian Broner, right? Now, with Adrian Broner, I would expect Conor Ben to beat him. But with the other guys, Eubank and uh, Jawanta Davis, they look like cash-out fights to me. You could say that this is smart, and Eddie Hearn is actually protecting his fighter. Because look, he's stuck between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, he can pursue Terence Crawford and pursue Boots Ennis, get smashed to bits and make not much money. Or he can pursue these other fights, perhaps get smashed to bits as well, but make a lot more. So you could say that he is actually looking out for his interests in that sense. But then there's another way to look at it. You could say that maybe he just needs to continue his learning process at 147 pounds. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section below. Eddie Hearn making an offer to Javonta Tank Davis to fight Conor Ben. Is he just clout chasing? Is he serious? Will Javonta Davis consider it because he's not sure what's going on with PBC's broadcast deal? Let me know what you think.